Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Back here today with another response video. This is one called the metal tag. So you might be thinking, wait a minute, didn't you already do that? Yes, I did. I did a response video to the metal tag 2022 created by Scott from the Rock Scout. This is another tag by the same name created by a guy called Jacob from Denmark. So his uh, YouTube name is Female Metal Fan. So yeah, but real name Jacob, and he's just made an alternative metal tag, which is quite interesting. And I thought, again, really good ideas, and it's a good way of spotlighting and showcasing some things in the collection, some things that I haven't shown before as well. Some you have seen though. So what this one consists of is eight questions, and basically you have to show a few releases in relation to that question. So Jacob's uh, channel is really interesting. I've just discovered it recently. So I'll leave a link in the description so you can go and check out his channel as well. And um, see his responses but today I'm going to give mine eight questions but I have about four or five releases per one so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail maybe just a quick comment and that's it I have a lot to show so let's get straight into it okay so the female metal fan tag the first question is show some releases by German hard rock and metal bands okay so what I've got is my five favorite bands from that particular category so first of all except with restless and wild this is one of my favorite German heavy metal bands, just classic 80s speed metal. I've said before that Metal Heart is my favorite by these guys, but I've shown that a couple of times before, so I just thought I'd show this for something different. To me, this one's a close second, and both of those albums are better, better than Balls to the Wall, in my opinion, so except with Restless and Wild. Okay, up next. Halloween with Keeper of the Seven Keys, part one. So if you watched my uh, terrible albums video, my response video, you'll notice that I included Keeper of the Seven Keys part two in that, and I got absolutely slammed for it by some people, and I do understand because a lot of people love that album. For me, it just didn't click, but this one, this is just an absolute classic from beginning to end. Just great traditional German heavy metal, a little bit like Iron Maiden on speed, but a distinctly Germanic atmosphere. I love this. So yeah, Halloween, Keeper of the Seven Keys part one. Okay. So up next, another great band to show. This one, this is Running Wild with Under Jolly Roger. So again, classic German heavy metal, raw and aggressive, always stuck to its roots. And um, some people have labeled it power metal, but really it's just traditional heavy metal with a pirate theme. But this is just such a fantastic album. It also crosses over traditional heavy metal with thrash metal and it's quite heavy. I think it influenced a lot of thrash bands like Metallica to a degree, but um, yeah, great band anyway. Running Wild with Under Rock, Jolly Roger. All right, okay, and up next, another CD. This is Except Related, Udo with Steel Factory. So Udo Dirkschneider, of course, the original lead vocalist of Except, and then after he left the band, he branched out and made his own solo project. This one came out in 2015, I've spoken about it before. Absolutely classic, brilliant. Brilliant from beginning to end. If you like Accept, especially the old school stuff with Udo, you will love this as well. Just love it. So Udo with Steel Factory. All right, and the last German hard rock heavy metal band I'm going to share, show is definitely a classic one. So of course, Scorpions with Worldwide Live. So Scorpions are in my top three bands of all time, believe it or not. Just um, just really like the appeal of their sound, particularly the 70s and 80s songs, and um. Yeah, they're, they're just one of my top bands of all time. So this one, Worldwide Life, it's got, it's really good for me because it's got a lot of famous songs from the 70s and 80s, early 80s. So it's like just brilliant. So double live album. So Scorpions, awesome stuff. Okay, so moving on to the next question in the thread then. So number two, show some Danish hard rock and heavy metal bands. So I don't own a lot, but I'll show you what I've got. So first of all, here is Denial of God with the, the Hallow Mass. So I have spoken about this band before as well. Denial of God are a sort of a black metal band from Denmark, but they call themselves black horror metal. So a lot of the lyrics are inspired by horror films and the supernatural and the ethereal. And it blends heavy metal with this sort of like melodic tinge of traditional heavy metal. And um, I really like this album. It's just fantastic. So Denial of God with the Hallow Mass. Okay, so... Talking about Danish bands, I know this is very cliche, how could I not show this, but this is King Diamond with them. So I think when people think of Danish heavy metal, they always think of King Diamond and Merciful Fate. So like everyone else, I've included this. 
yeah, this is a great theatrical dark album. I don't need to say much about this, but um, yeah, if you ask me which I prefer between King Diamond and Merciful Fate, I think Merciful Fate overall, but this album is definitely awesome. So King Diamond with them. Of course, King Diamond being the lead vocalist and the conceptual brains behind Merciful Fate, like this is his solo project. Okay, and on the topic of Merciful Fate, here we have the best of Merciful Fate. So I got this at a local market, I'll just show you this. There's the king there with a personal message to fans, really cool. This compilation is just awesome. It's like a greatest hits all of the classic songs like Nuns Have No Fun, Curse of the Pharaohs, Black Funeral, Satan's Fall, Desecration of, Desecration of Souls, Gypsy, Burning the Cross. Yeah, awesome. So for beginning to end, this is brilliant. Um, now, speaking of which, my favorite Merciful Fate album is probably Don't Break the Oath, and I don't own that one. But when I saw uh, Marty, he showed his vinyl version in this thread, and I was really jealous of that. I'd love to get a copy of that, because that's my favorite Merciful Fate album. Just on that note, here's another one I own. This is Nine, a kind of unknown one for Merciful Fate. It's not as good as the early stuff, but I still enjoy it, especially that song, what is it, Sold My Soul. Yeah, that's great. So it's sort of a darker album from Merciful Fate. So they're my Danish hard rock and heavy metal bands. Okay, coming up to question number three. Show some female fronted bands. I don't own a lot, so I'll just show you everything that I've got. Okay, first of all, Astati with Doom Dark Years. So Astati are not only female fronted, it's actually an all female black metal band. So it was um, a trio, three women, making um, atmospheric, majestic, Hellenic black metal. So it's a band from Greece, but sadly they're not around anymore because the band leader, uh, Tristessa, she unfortunately, she passed away from cancer a few years ago. So the band dissolved after that. But um, yeah, such a sh shame and real tragedy, but really they were a great band. So Astarte with Doom Dark Years, all female black metal band. Okay, so going to another female fronted band. This isn't a band as such, but it is, you know, female fronted, female consisting entity. This is Agast with Hexerei und Zwielich der Finsternis. So I've spoken about this on this channel as well. This is really dark and eerie, dark ambient occult music made by two witches. Well, they, you know, present themselves as witches. They go by the names of Nacht und Nebel. Um, so like one's Norwegian and one's German. And again, sadly, one of the members of this project, she passed away re recently in that dreadful terrorist attack in Norway when that uh, fundamentalist went around with a bow and arrow, like randomly killing five people. So um, Nebel, one of the members of this group, she was uh, like just sadly one, one of those five victims. Like so, so tragic that those five people were killed in such a senseless event. I don't understand it, but um, you know, her music will live on through this release. So if you like dark ambient occult, or you've never heard of that, check it out. Aghast with Hexerei and Zwielich der Finsternis. Okay, which means witchery or sorcery in the twilight of darkness. Okay, and just a moment. Okay, up next, another female front of band which I've spoken about. This is Guano Apes with Proud Like a God. So Guano Apes are or were uh, a kind of like new metal slash alternative metal band from Germany. And the way I found out about this band was with the main single from this album, Open Your Eyes, absolutely brilliant song. So it's, um, it's not purist new metal, like it really does cross over with alternative metal. There's a lot of atmosphere, but just really great stuff, great songs. And um, the lead vocalist, her name is Sandra Nasic. She's Croatian, but she's got such a powerful voice. In fact, the first time I heard this, it sounded quite manly. She's got a really husky voice, but she also has that sweet side to her voice as well. But like so many great songs on this album, like I'm never deterred by like labels or boundaries. This isn't the kind of stuff I normally listen to, but it was just because of the atmosphere of their music and her vocals. I really like this. So Guano Apes with Proud Like a God. Okay, and coming up to the last female front of band I'm going to show. This is Nakabide with lots of eyes. So if you haven't seen previous videos of mine, um, I'll just tell you quickly. Nakabide are a Japanese heavy metal band based in Bangkok uh, with a female vocalist, Hitomi, who's got a really powerful voice. And these guys are very influenced by like old school metal, like uh, Judas Priest and Iron Maiden, but it's got some really heavy crunch to it, shredding guitar solos, and awesome, powerful vocals. And it's unique, I really like it. So my last female fronted band, Nakabide with lots of eyes. Okay. Gotta get this back in the case. Okay. Okay, so up next, 
show some thrash metal, death metal, black metal, or darker stuff. So, for those of you who are familiar with my channel, you know that the majority of what I show is death and black metal, especially black metal, so it would be boring for me just to show more of those again today. So what I decided to do was to go with the thrash option, because that's one that I own less of and don't show as much. So here's a few thrash albums which I own. First of all, Exodus with Bonded by Blood. So don't need to say much about this absolutely classic thrash metal album. I really like the rawness and aggression on this. It's great, um, especially the backing vocals. Um, like so many good songs on this, but some of my favorites would be um, A Lesson in Violence, um, Deliver Us to Evil, great riff on that song, just so catchy, awesome. Also Piranha, I love the backing vocals on that track. It sounds like a group of drunken hooligans yelling the vocals down a phone box and it being recorded across the street. Fucking awesome. And um, yeah, so they're, they're some of my favorites, but just raw, gritty, nasty thrash metal exodus with Bonded by Blood. Awesome stuff. Okay, so next thrash metal band I'm going to show, this is one that I, I, thought, I think they're sort of up and coming, so people probably have heard of them. This is Hatchet with Awaiting Evil. So one of those new generation bands, which is hearkening back to the old style of thrash metal, sort of very influenced by, I would say, early Metallica, early Slayer, but just got some great grooves, some catchy songs, great backing vocals. Like, ah, um, oh, what's the really good song on this? I like the title track, Awaiting Evil. It's just so hooky and so catchy, it's brilliant. But um, Hatchet, if you like old school style uh, thrash metal, that, that resurgence in a youthful way, definitely check this out. So Hatchet with Awaiting Evil. Okay, next thrash album. This one is kind of, it's not purest thrash, thrash actually, it's more like death thrash, but it lends a lot of influence to thrash. So this is Hellwitch with Sysigial Miscreancy, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So they use a lot of made up words on this, but that's what I like about this album. This is just absolutely scorching, brilliant, like raw, wicked guitar-driven death metal, but with a strong thrash influence, raspy vocals, and just like so fast and blistering and catchy, but like you're just completely consumed the whole time by the music on this. Like so many great songs on this, but my absolute favorites would be Nosferatu, He Will Possess You, Mordorivial Dissemination, and Pyrophobic Seizure. But ah, uh, great vocal effects on this too. If you just like thrashy guitar-driven stuff, check this out, Hell Witch with Sazigil Miscreancy. Okay. And a couple of other thrash ones to show you. Okay, this is up next is a band that everyone knows. This is Creator with Phantom Antichrist. So this album has a lot of nostalgic value to me because I bought it when I first moved overseas about like nine years ago. So it was one of the first albums I ever heard when living over here. What I like about it is it's definitely thrash metal, but also it crosses over with sort of like a melodic heavy metal and you know what a lot of melodic death metal bands are doing as well but um just really catchy songs more anthemic than the past i just think they're improving as songwriters and i really like this i also saw the tour for this uh album in thailand which was great so creator with phantom antichrist okay and the last thrash one today this is a bit of black thrash actually so it's crossing over with a couple of styles one of my favorite albums of all time this is nocturnal breed with aggressor so if you're not familiar, Nocturnal Breed are a black thrash band from Norway. And I believe that the original, some of the original members were from Dimmu Borgir or had some association, but don't think it's like gothic vampiric black metal, not at all. This is like uh, raw, wicked, guitar driven, again, really thrashy black thrash, like um, sort of very influenced by the aesthetics of Motorhead. And you know, it's all like leather studs, fistful of metal kind of stuff, but absolutely, brilliant razor sharp riffs they also include some keyboards for dark atmosphere so they incorporate elements of black metal as well but just so much energy this album gets me going it gets me pumped some of my favorite songs on this would be frantic aggressor maggot master nocturnal breed the co cover of death's evil dead also alcoholic rights yeah awesome stuff so nocturnal breed with aggressor okay so they're my thrash albums so coming in to category number five, or question number five, show some albums with sleazy covers. Okay, this one was kind of fun, something different. All right, so first of all, my favorite band, rock band of all time, here's Kiss with Love Gun, so, you know, very groupie-esque shot, so the band being worshipped by all the hot groupies down below. Yeah. Yeah, I just really think that's a cool, iconic shot. Like, it's not overly sleazy, but 
you know, you get the message of what this band is about <laughs> and what how their life was in the late 70s with this album. Okay, so the rest of the sleazy album covers I have are on CD. So I've included dis a disclaimer for this video. If you're easily offended by, you know, uh, risque imagery or gore or something like that, look away. I haven't inclu included any gory ones here, but it's got some, you know, pretty out there stuff. So first of all, uh, Impaled Nazarene with Nile. So I hope you can see that, but basically there's a bit of perversion and bondage going on here. You know, people in uh, lingerie, goat mask over the crotch and some bondage, leather straps, ass being slapped. Yeah, so of course Impaled Nazarene have never been shy of that sort of, uh, that kind of imagery and those, those kind of lyrics in their music. But this is an absolutely brilliant album, by the way. Like this was the one which came out in the late, no, no, sorry, about 2000, I think. But it's when they sort of um, discarded more of their punk influences and I felt it went in more of a metal direction. And incidentally, this was the album which featured just temporary member um, Wild Child, Alexi Laiho from Children of Bottom, Rest in Peace. So he was the lead guitarist on this album. So he played some brilliant solos on this and he was also their touring guitarist for this album. But yeah, Impaled Nazarene with Nile. That's my second sleazy cover. Okay, the next one, like I said, disclaimer, this one's pretty out there for sleazy covers. Okay, but we have Marduk with Obedience. So you see there, bondage oriented imagery again because the song on this album is called Obedience. It's got some nipple clamps on the back there. Yeah, so this is the single EP. I bought it in 2000. The song Obedience was on the album The Grand Dance Macabre. It also includes a different version of Funeral Bitch, which is a much better version, I agree. Like the drumming and the bass, the bass sound is so thick and the drumming from Frederick Anderson is fucking thunderous, crushing. So great cover of, uh, sorry, great version of Funeral Bitch on this. And they also do a cover of Into the Crypts of Rays. But yeah, that's pretty sleazy, Marduk with Obedience. Okay, and two more sleazy album covers. This one's pretty funny actually. Scorpions with Love Drive. <laughs> so pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this album must have been pretty controversial for its time, you know, 1979. But yeah, that's the embodiment of sleaze. And just one more. This is the next one I'm going to show you. This is a compilation that a family member gave to me, actually. Um, this is Rock Hard. So the woman in a PVC and bondage gear, very nice. And you see here, this is basically just um, a compilation of heavy metal, hard rock greatest hits. Like it's got songs by Black Sabbath, Living Color, Judas Priest, Megadeth, Anthrax, Slade, Alice Cooper, Deep Purple, Motorhead. Quiet Riot, Poison, and they also have some really random stuff in here, like um, Puddle of Mud and stuff, but uh, yeah, it's actually, it's a really good party compilation, like all the famous songs you know, conveniently on one CD, so last sleazy cover, rock hard. Okay, so I'm getting through this kind of faster than I thought, which is good. All right, so the next question, question six, show albums with animals on the cover. Okay, so first of all, one of my favorite rock albums of all time, Alcatraz with Dangerous Games. So you see there's the panther next to the zebra sofa in the living room. Just an awesome cover. It's, it embodies the 80s. If you're not familiar, Alcatraz is the band formed by Graham Bonnet after he left, after he left uh, Rainbow. Originally with Yngwie Malmsteen, this album has got a different guitarist though. But if you just like melodic, hard rock, synth rock, 80s heavy metal, you will love this. Love this band, especially the first three albums. I think my favorite one is Disturbing the Peace, or this one, which is the third album. But yeah, Alcatraz with Dangerous Games, with the Panther. Okay, now, other albums with animals on the cover. So, Alice in Chains, self-titled album with the dog. This was the one that came out after Dirt. I don't like it as much as Dirt, but it does have some damn good songs. My favorite song on this is probably Brush Away, just dreamy and atmospheric. Okay. Okay, another album with an animal on the cover. This is Destroyer 666 with Unchain the Wolves. So, Destroyer 666, classic black thrash from Australia. And they've really evolved into international superstars, deservedly so, because they're a great band. This is always going to be my favourite album by them, because it was the first one I heard, but Destroyer 666, Unchain the Wolves. Okay. Okay, up next, another album with an animal on the cover. Okay, this is Silverchair with Frog Stomp. So, I don't know how many people are familiar with this. They were very popular 
where I'm from in Australia. So they came out in the mid nineties, sort of, they were labeled as a grunge band and like a Nirvana ripoff, because if you even look at the band, the way they were, like Daniel Johns, the vocalist, he looked like Kurt Cobain with the, the same length blonde hair and the horizontally striped t-shirts. The drummer also had really long hair like Dave Grohl. But honestly, the vocals, they're kind of reminiscent of Nirvana, but also Pearl Jam. But musically, I think they're much heavier. It's sort of, the music has more in common with stuff like Metallica and um, Black Sabbath. But I think this album and the second album, Freak Show, were just great. After that, yeah, it sort of went into more sort of like mainstream radio friendly rock. But really like this album. Some of my favorite songs on this, Israel Sun, Tomorrow, Shade, Madman, Suicidal Dream. Yeah, it's really good. So be open-minded. Yeah, um, a lot of people gave this band shit, but I, once again, I just listen to a band because of the music, and this is just awesome. So Silver Chair with Frogstone. Okay. And one more. Got another Scorpions album for you. Unbreakable, so it's got the actual Scorpion on the front. So this was the 2004 album, a good return to form after some not very good albums in the 90s. Love this album. There's a couple of, maybe too many ballads, but like the first... Five tracks are fucking killer. New Generation, Love Em or Leave Em, Deep and Dark, Borderline, Blood Too Hot, Scorpions, Unbreakable. Okay. And, okay, records, so question seven, records with metal in the title or songs. Okay, I'll start with the most appropriate one. This is Metal Lucifer with Heavy Metal Malaysian Chainsaw, otherwise known as Heavy Metal Chainsaw. So. This band had to start that list, didn't it? It's got metal in the name, Metal Lucifer. The title of the album is Heavy Metal Malaysian Chainsaw. And it doesn't have one song, it's got multiple songs. It's got Heavy Metal Chainsaw, My Way is Heavy Metal, and Heavy Metal Samurai, and Metal Lucifer. So, band, album title, and four songs containing metal. Metal Lucifer. Great Japanese traditional heavy metal band. So obviously you can tell they're dedicated to the concept of heavy metal. All right. So, up next, classic album, Anvil with Metal on Metal. Yeah, this was the first one I ever bought by the band. Classic Canadian heavy metal, which was so influential, and that song is just so catchy. That's the title track and also the name of the album, Anvil, Metal on Metal. Okay, up next, Manowar, Battle Hymns. So the song on this is called Metal Days, otherwise known as Heavy Metal Days. I love that song. That is just such a fantastic anthem to metal music. Like the lyrics are a bit cheesy, but very fun. And um, this album, by the way, I know in a previous thread for the Rock Scout, I showed Kings of Metal. This is hands down my favorite Man of War album. And I actually think, even though I said Kings of Metal was an album with a great vocal performance, I think Eric Adams shines on this. This is the absolute best. This album is killer. So Man of War with Battle Hymns and the song being Metal Days. Okay. And last, album to show containing the word metal in the title. This is Sarcophago with Rotting. So Brazilian uh, black thrash metal band. And the song on this album is called Sex, Drinks and Metal. <laughs> great title. They, you know, talking about all the great things in life. <laughs> and um, they also have some other funny song titles in this. Uh, the other one being Alcoholic Coma. But this is a very extreme album. So that's Sarcophago with Sex, Drinks and Metal from uh, rotting. Okay. Oh, and one more. Actually, I've got one more. I was going to show uh, Heavy Metal by Judas Priest, but Mark from Wandering Souls webzines also showed that, so no one's shown this one to my knowledge. So Judas Priest, Painkiller, and the song being Metal Meltdown, which is just a scorching, aggressive track. Yeah. All right. Okay, and coming up to the last category. So question number eight. Music in genres outside of hard rock and heavy metal. So if you've watched my Guilty guilty Pleasures video, which was my response to Trevor Hickey, you'll know that I do listen to a lot of styles of music which are not heavy metal as well. And in that video I explained we should never have to feel guilty about liking any anything. You know, like when it comes to music especially. So in the Guilty Pleasures I already showed some non-metal music I listened to, so I tried to show some different stuff today. Okay, so I'll start with the CDs. So first of all, Dragon. This is Dragon with the very best of Dragon. Dragon, I'm not sure how well known they are across the world, but like they have that really famous song Celebration, you know, woohoo! But um, also April Sun in Cuba, I love that song. They, a lot of people think they were an Aussie band, but they're actually Kiwis, or at least the Hunter Brothers were. So originally from New Zealand, and then they settled in Australia, but just great 80s, like uh, Aussie, Kiwi, pop rock. Like so many good songs on this, like um, 
April sun in Cuba, rain, get that jive, all so catchy. So if you've never heard this band, check them out for sure, if you like pop rock. But also there's so many other ones that are really catchy, like Still In Love With You, Conqueroo, Island Nights, Love's Not Enough, Magic. You know, I could go on and on. Pretty much every song on this is great. So that's Dragon with the very best of Dragon, pop rock. Okay, now another one. This was one of my play, most played albums of 2021. The best of the Talking Heads. So, you know, Talking Heads are sort of post-punk, quirky, uh, pop rock band led by David Byrne, who went on to enjoy a successful solo career. Just awesome. Like, this is really off the wall, weird stuff. But it's so good. It's so catchy. I listened to this. This brought me through a lot of times in lockdown when I was home and, you know, had nothing to do. I listened to it so much last year. And I definitely recommend checking it out if you just like something different for pop rock. So, Talking Heads. Okay. Also, just three records to show for um, non-metal related music. First of all, Mick Jagger, She's the Boss. So everyone knows Mick Jagger, the vocalist of Rolling Stones. But his solo albums from the 80s, there was this one and Primitive Cool. They're more rock oriented rather than bluesy like the Rolling Stones. But again, it's got a very 80s sound. I have an affinity to that and I just love this album. I listened to this. I got it in September 2020. I've heard it so many times. Just awesome. I really, really like it. Very catchy pop rock, like some of my favorite songs on this. Lonely at the Top, Half a Loaf, Running Out of Luck, Hard Woman, such a great ballad. Oh, Hard Woman, I sing my heart out to that song. Also, Lucky and Love, oh, how can you get any catchier than that song? And She's the Boss, awesome, awesome stuff. Mick the Jagger, She's the Boss. <laughs> Mick Jagger, She's the Boss. <laughs> okay, and Another one, another non-metal album. This is Lemonheads with Creator. So I've spoken about this band. They went on to became, become an indie alternative band, but in the beginning they were sort of um, melodic punk rock, sort of gritty pop punk. And when I say pop punk, I don't mean that like sort of whiny, simple, planned stuff, but just really good atmospheric punk music. So this is sort of when they were punk, but branching off into alternative music as well. But really love this band. Not many people talk about them, but I've always liked them and I still do. Lemonheads with Creator. Okay, and one more. This is Steely Dan with Asia. So Steely Dan, of course, like progressive pop rock band, which incorporate uh, elements of jazz and uh, R&B, like old good R&B, not the modern day crap, but just really atmospheric, emotive music. I love this band and they've stuck with me through all the years. So yeah, that's my last one from uh, music in genres outside of hard rock and metal. So there we go, my answer to eight questions. Uh, each one contained about five release, uh, releases, so I've shown about 40 items today. But only 27 minutes, so that's not too bad. I really enjoyed doing this, and um, hopefully it's given you an idea of what you can come to expect later on. But um, Jacob, thanks a lot for the idea. I really enjoyed doing this, and um, I think it was a really great idea for a, a, a tag. So thanks very much for coming up with it. I hope you enjoyed it too. And everyone else, I'll be back soon with uh, another video. Not sure when, not sure what I'm doing, but it'll be a surprise. In the meantime, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, all that good stuff, especially if you enjoyed the video. And take care, and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.